Hello everyone, I am Chris Clamp and welcome back to my studio. For those of you that are new to the channel, let me introduce myself. I'm Chris Clamp, I'm an oil painter, and I am a bit of an art world insider. I worked at a commercial gallery for 15 years and I picked up a lot of tips and tricks along the way that can help you with your art career. So today's topic is going to be a bit of a continuation of where we left off in the last video. In the last video, we were talking about the ideas of studies and how you can use those studies to not only help your artwork become better, but to then add another thing to your body of work that you can additionally market and sell. I find working in the sketchbook on simple preliminary sketches to be very helpful for planning. But whenever I started to do these more thought out drawings, it really helped me understand the painting more by the time I even got to the painting. In the last video, I also mentioned a product that I've used recently, which I really enjoy. And that product is Arches Oil Paper. It's made by the paper making company called Arches or pronounced Arch. This product, oil paper, is made specifically for oil paint and oil pastel. It is sized and engineered so it is ready to go. You do not need to gesso or prime the paper in any way. You just tear it out of the pad or have a loose sheet on hand and go directly to it with your paint or pastel. I'm an oil painter, so my experience with the product is with oil paint. I haven't used oil pastel, so I can't speak of it, but I imagine that it works just as beautifully. Let's dive in and discuss this magical product. So I have a table in front of me, which I will show you soon, with a few examples of things that might help better illustrate what I'm discussing with you. Arches oil paper is sold online or in your local art supply store in a few different options. You can buy it bound in a pad, like a 9 by 12 pad, and it's bound on the short side of the paper. You can also buy it in loose sheets as well. I've purchased it from my art supply store in 20 by 16 sheets, but you can also get it in 22 by 30 inch sheets. It is also available in very, very large rolls. So this is like the prepared paper straight before it's been torn or cut down. Arches oil paper is also a 140 pound paper. Like I mentioned in the previous video, when I talked about thickness and weight of a paper, this is a good middle ground. It's not as rigid or as thick as a 300 pound watercolor paper. The paper is also cold pressed, so it has a little bit of texture to it, which is helpful to hold your paint. There are a few things that I love about this material. I love the way that it takes the oil paint. I love that you can just take your paint with solvent and go straight in and work on some beautiful oil sketches. I love that you can tear the product down. I can take a sheet and tear it into whatever size or format that I find is helpful. A few things to keep in mind, however, is this is a work on paper. So when it comes time for you to frame or present the work of art, you have to keep that in mind. Framing a work on paper is a lot different than framing a canvas. However, what I have done in the past is I've taken my product before I've started to work on it and mounted it to a panel with that beautiful product I've told you called Beva 371. I will show you examples of that here soon. To do this, however, you must have an idea of what you're going to do and have planned out your size and format. 
any plein air painters that may be watching, this is a beautiful product to try to do oil sketches in the field with. You can go ahead and tear the product down, mount it to a panel, and put it in your plein air setup, and take that with you and then work on site. It's a pretty cost-effective product when you compare it to some high-grade portrait quality linens with a smooth surface that you may want to mount onto a panel. Keep in mind, it takes the paint differently. So you have to try these out and see what's best for your work and your application. So let me show you a few things here on my table. I have a few works of art that I'd like to share with you. I did these works of art in 2020 during the pandemic. I had purchased the pad of oil paper prior to the pandemic and it was a perfect time to check it out. I started my study by doing a simple graphite drawing of this apple here on the left. This was done on a basic piece of Arches watercolor paper. When I was happy with my drawing, I was able to make a, a simple transfer of it to the Arches oil paper and did this oil painting directly onto the paper. Now, as you can see, it is a little sunken in. And as I've mentioned before, the paper almost takes oil paint kind of like watercolor. It is very washy in places, but allows you to build up. It also doesn't take detail in the same refinement that you might expect from your oil on panel that you might do, like an ampersand panel or something that is properly gessoed. But this was a wonderful experiment to do during that time to test what the product does and also try a sketch and work quickly with it. One thing I also want to show you is this was made four years ago and there is no signs of any sort of oil staining on the back, which is something that you would probably expect on a piece of normal watercolor paper that you may have done an oil painting onto. The oil can seep in. As I've mentioned before, there's going to be a bit of a problem when framing this. You're going to have to frame this and possibly have it under glass because of the way that this is the product is. It's going to be framed much like a drawing, kind of like this one. So you might have it centered within a window mat behind glass. Now one thing I wanted to do to experiment, because I do enjoy this product for sketches, I decided to try to mount some. This is a piece of Arches oil paper that's mounted onto a panel. It's mounted onto ACM, piece of aluminum composite material. And I've mounted the paper using Beva 371 film, which is wonderful because if I ever wanted to remove this, I apply heat to it to reverse the glue, to heat it again. And then the paper could be removed very, very carefully. And this is ready to go. I can take this into my plein air kit or even in the studio here and work on a sketch from it directly. But as you can see, this is a beautiful, beautiful product, ready to go once it's mounted. And I've done this once before. Here's another example. This is a painting on Arches oil paper that I've mounted onto a panel. I also did this as an oil painting on an ampersand gesso board. And the gesso board does keep more detail than the oil paper, but this is such a wonderful way to do a sketch. You get a nice soft look, which I enjoy, and you can quickly paint because the, paint, the, the paper is rather absorbent. As you can see also, there is a certain texture to the paper. It's kind of like I mentioned before. It's not quite like a cold press paper, and it's definitely not hot press. So that extra tooth is good when working on certain materials. This is just a remnant of Arches oil paper. So as you can see, it looks exactly like a piece of watercolor paper that you might draw on, but it is made to work with oil paint.
there's a watermark that you can see. Since I have this loose sheet of Arches oil paper, I thought I'd show you how it takes the paint so you can understand a bit more. In my medium jar here, I have just your standard OMS, Gamsol in this case, and on my palette I have a few saturated colors. So just for fun, here is oil paint on the oil paper. You get a nice broken edge, as you can see, due to the texture of the paper. And I can actually dilute the paint and get some wonderful washy effects, as you can see. It is rather absorbent, as you can tell, and after I make a few marks, even with a brush full of OMS, it sort of stops. Now, this is not dry, it's just absorbed into the surface. So, in contrast, I will add a darker color to this, and you can see it becomes blended, and I can work on top of it as well. And looking at the back, there is absolutely no evidence of the solvent soaking into the paper. It's a wonderful product. I hope you all found this little demonstration informative and helpful. I think this is a wonderful product and it can definitely be used when helping plan out your final paintings. It's a wonderful material for oil sketches, plein air work, a la prima portraits, a variety of things. And I encourage you to check it out. One thing I also wanted to clarify the paintings that I had shown you where I had mounted the painting onto a panel, I had done that with a product called Viva 371. And I will also show you a video of that and how to use that product in the near future. But one thing I wanted to clarify about that is the framing. Now that I've mounted this product onto a panel, this can be framed just like a painting on panel now. You could put it into a ready-made plein air style frame or any other style floater frame that you might enjoy using. Since it is mounted onto the panel, it is protected and prepared and can easily be framed out from under glass. Now, one quick thing I will talk about is just a little bit of insider art world information. A lot of people don't mind works behind glass, but I've noticed during my time working at a gallery that reflections are often a deal breaker. A lot of people don't like spending money on a work of art and then hanging on the wall and seeing themselves reflected in the glass or something else outside the window. Personally, I don't mind. I have many works of art in my home that are framed behind glass and it does not bother me at all but i've seen this be a problem with certain collectors so there is a wonderful product out there called museum glass you could use that is anti-reflective this isn't the fuzzy kind they made years ago this is actually pretty good stuff but it doesn't get rid of all reflection keep that in mind when giving artwork to your gallery or presenting things to your client. Sometimes if something can be framed out from under glass, then it can be something that might be more desirable than a work of art that is behind glass. Oh, and one other thing about that, framing works of art behind glass is a lot more expensive than using a plein air style ready-made frame or framing works of art in a traditional floater frame. So keep that in mind. I hope this video was helpful and informative to you all. Please share this with your friends and your fellow artists out there. Please subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment below. I look forward to speaking with you all in the chat and I also look forward to sharing with you all the next video soon. Happy painting, everyone.